Hello everybody and welcome to this video where today we're going to talk about something serious. This is going to be a serious video for serious people. So today we're going to be talking about canceling. So what I wanted to do here today is um, kind of tell you some stories, I guess. I, I don't know a better way of saying this. Um, I have talked to people who I worked with in the film industry um, as of late. I've talked to them as of late. Um, who have been canceled since I went away from film um, and then have come back. Some of the people did some pretty heinous shit. Some of the people um, didn't do the thing that they got in trouble for. Somebody who had done something that uh, was something that the person should not have done um, has apologized profusely and has changed how they are about it. And um, one of these people, who I'm not close with by any means at all, um, has not um, changed their ways, let's say. There have also been some people I know who have been canceled in the writing community or who have tried to been canceled. A couple of the people in the writing world who I have talked to that this has happened to. One person did something, didn't realize how out of touch they were. When the act of canceling happened, it came out and apologized and was like, I'm so fucking sorry, oh my god, I had no idea that this is how that was, whatever. That person is still, I guess, technically got some, we'll say got some cookies on them, because, like, that shit doesn't go away, you know, because the internet is the internet. And then this other person who, and I know I'm, like, subtweeting all this shit, but the idea here is, is, like, I'm not trying to get you to go look up these people or to feel sorry for these people. I'm trying to illustrate points, okay? So another person, another writer, had some shit go down and basically everybody jumped on them before they can say anything to defend themselves, to apologize to anything. Like people heard one side of a story and made their minds up, and that was the end of it. Like, I don't know how I feel about any of these things. And I've talked about cancel culture and the whole thing before. And, um, like, as much as you don't think it does, it does happen on both sides. But it got me thinking about a lot of stuff. This video and this discussion is, I hope, for like creators, like not just YouTube creators, but like writers, um, artists, filmmakers, you know, whatever your art is. And the second group of people that this is for would be people here on YouTube who watch videos and who are active in comments and how they feel about these things. So I was, I was thinking about my stuff after hearing some of the things that, um, got some of the people who I mentioned, didn't mention, got them in trouble. I was thinking about me, my art, and the things I've done, like things I've written, movies I've made, the whole deal. I'm like looking through stuff and just kind of going over it. And I'm like, dude, like, I'm sure there's a bunch of my art that could get me canceled, I guess. Like if people wanted to fucking do that and that's that's weird and strange i've made movies called like vaginal holocaust and cage lesbos a go-go you know and erection um and brides of sodom and orgy of blood and all this shit um 
and like regardless of what you think those titles are those are not orn pay films they are just um titles that would shock somebody to get them to watch it's super schlock it's like all it is and so i was thinking about that and i'm like wow that's weird like and like maybe it's a good thing i walked away from filmmaking when i did you know before like a lot of um snap judgment things like that happened but then i was just thinking about my poetry this is like a weird thing because like for me i try to leave my um poetry alone because they're like little time capsules of who i was at that moment when i wrote that thing i'm definitely a different person now i hope it is obvious i hope that it is clear that i am not the same person and none of us want to be the same person we've been like the whole idea of living is to constantly improve on yourself you know so i don't edit stuff out of my work because of how i feel now as opposed to things that I wrote. Because I want to see how far I've come from. And where I was and where I am. And I know that's like an important thing for me. But then I was thinking about it. And I'm like, but my readers have no fucking clue about that. So my readers can pick up a book. And read something and all of a sudden um go oh that's not a popular take that's horrible you know fuck this guy i understand that i understand the reason why someone would want to do that but i think the big topic of conversation when it comes to these kind of things is intent and it's the same reason why stephen king hasn't been canceled for dropping the N word and the F word in like every book he wrote in between like his first book to, I mean, I don't know if he still does it. I don't read his new shit, but he is praised by the same people who would probably cancel anyone else who did those things. And again, a lot of this is because of intent. And like, if you're reading something and you're like, what, like, what's the intent of this person doing this thing? Like, the reason why this is coming up is because this was the conversation. A writer I know is now afraid to publish anything for fear that their older work is going to, like, shine light on, like, shine a negative light on him their newer stuff like my take was art is art you know like you create what you create like just because you create something doesn't mean you're that person a lot of poets write about suicide does that mean every poet needs to be on a fucking suicide watch 24 hours a day a lot of novelists write about murder does that mean they're going to be murdering people that's really bad but, like, if somebody is writing about something and then going on Twitter and saying, I wrote about this thing because this is my belief and, like, I feel the same way and I feel like this all the time. It, it's just, it's weird. And, like, the difference in art compared to life is depending on what inspires you, you create something and a lot of times the things you can create are ugly fucking things because that was the inspiration for that piece. That doesn't mean that that is how you feel. That doesn't mean that that is you every day. I guess my advice is to artists of any kind. If you are true to your art, if you're true to the process, if you're true to your inspirations just do what you do if you are afraid then probably you shouldn't be an artist 
in the first place. And what I mean by that is if fear is running your judgment on what you should or should not create, I don't know, maybe that's a indicator that you're not ready to be doing this or to at least be making stuff for public consumption. God, if I sat here and like really thought about like every poem or every story I've written or every song I've written, like I've written some fucking horrific shit, dude. So this right here, okay. Fingering in the mundane. Um, this book has a bunch of poems in it from when I was, let's say, very centrist. This book has poems in it that, um, like, were at the time of me writing these, were like my takes on, like, the Me Too movement. Um, I don't know if I have any, like, cancel culture stuff in here. I'm sure I do. I'm sure it leaks in. But there was a lot of things in here. Because, like, you guys, if you guys don't know, and I hate bringing this up because people get weird every time I do, but for a long time, like, I was um, socially left and fiscally right-leaning in my politics, okay? Okay. And it wasn't until probably the summer or fall of 2020, so it's relatively new, that I realized a lot of the views I had were either wrong or um, I noticed that things that I had believed in for a long time actually hadn't helped me, my family, or anyone I cared about. But I was told that these are the right things to believe, you know? And I had a bit of an awakening. That awakening, I feel like, has come across in my writing. But the only way you would know that is if you looked at where I had come from. So you look at where I've been and see where I am... And if you go through that, you see the growth. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I guess I'm just trying to say, like, if you get judged as a person by your art, that's just, I guess, a price you have to pay to be an artist in today's world. And if that cost is too high for you, then I don't know. Like, maybe, like, do something else. Like, I don't know, I don't know what to say. It, it hurts me to say that because I feel like creation is such a powerful thing. It's very therapeutic. It's very um, cathartic. It makes me sad because, like, I hadn't realized, like, how many people I actually have encountered or am acquaintances with who have had these things happen to them. And some of them are fucking just for having those things to them, okay? But others, like, you know, it's like that whole, um, the Lizzo thing, okay? Let's talk about that for a minute. For those of you who don't know, like, I didn't hear about this until seriously, like, um, maybe a week ago. So this might be old fucking news. I don't know how new or old this is, but so Lizzo in a song used a word that I guess in another country is a insult, but here it doesn't mean that. And she had that word in one of her songs. Somebody let her know after the song became a hit or whatever, that that word is offensive to a certain group of people. She apologized, and then she went and fucking changed it. She changed the recording and the whole fucking thing. Most people would never fucking do that, okay? She's like, I had no idea. I was ignorant to that. I had no fucking clue. Like, I'm going to fix that because that's fucked up, and I don't want to be that person. So she apologized for something that she had no idea was a fucking thing, fixed it 
And there's still people, well, she should have fucking known better. Like online, who still are giving her shit for it. And that's like the thing I'm talking about. Like, and I know like Lizzo's kind of a unique case where Lizzo did something, didn't realize it was bad at all, like had no fucking clue, because Lizzo can't fucking know what every word means in every country on the fucking planet. Does the thing, people give her shit, and she's like, holy shit, I'm so fucking sorry. You know what? I'm gonna fucking fix this. Fixes it, and people are still mad. That's fucked up. So this is how I'm gonna leave you on this. Just be true to yourself, you know? Like, don't be an asshole. Be true to yourself. Your creativity, your art is there to help you get through things. And so let it be that thing. You don't have to do the things I do. You don't have to do the things that anybody else does. Just be true to yourself. Um, and that's all you can do, really. And, like, if the world comes at you, the world fucking comes at you. We can't control the actions of others. We could give them the least amount of ammunition possible, but we can't control the acts of others. Just just do you. That's That's the best thing I can say. In the comments below, let me know. Um, what you think about this, how you feel about this. Um, if you are a creator of any kind, an artist of any kind, let me know if this topic has changed the way you create. Like, um, I mean, it's been going on now for probably like five years, six years, like um, the canceling thing. And I don't know if it's even as big of a deal as it was at one point, but um, I don't know. Just, I, I'm curious. Like, just the, the idea that outside influence can pre-affect the art you're going to create, that makes me sick. That makes me sick to my stomach. <sighs> that That is nauseating to me. I hope no one out there is going through that. If you're watching this video, I hope you have never gone through that. Um, and I hope you could just freely create and um, really just trust your instincts and trust your gut, trust your pen, trust your soul, trust your heart, the whole fucking thing. But yeah, let me know what you think about all this stuff. And I'm going to be doing a live stream in a bit here, so I will see you on the live stream. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.